The new Ford Mustang will go on sale pretty soon, and I think it's going to be one of Ford's best products in a very, very long time. And in this video, I'm gonna let you know why. Not just because it still has the V8 power under the hood with 500 horsepower in the new Dark Horse Mustang. You also have the 2.3 liter turbo four still, and you also have a brand new interior. Ford says it's supposed to be targeted towards younger buyers that grew up with video games and you can kind of see that because we have a big screen in the interior i think it's a little bit of a hit and miss there because they they did remove some really classic features of the mustang that's been around since the beginning in the 60s up until today they removed some of those design features I'm gonna show you that in just a second the current mustang starts at twenty nine thousand dollars for the ecoboost and over fifty seven thousand dollars for mach one this will probably sit a little higher than that so that's have a look at some of these sketches here i think it's interesting to see that they <laughs> decided to use a i think this is a, a tiger or something for inspiration for this sketch right here which is interesting i think maybe it would have been more suitable to have a horse for, at least from a marketing standpoint it's also interesting looking at the sketch that we have a koenigsegg style visor windshield we don't have a clear a pillar here which is interesting to see in this very early sketch i love this side view of the new mustang i think this is a really tight looking sketch which shows Shows all the muscles just using very simple pen and then a, a touch of cool gray this is my favorite type of sketches we don't really put out the wheels too much you focus on the line flow in the car but this also reminds me a lot of another American muscle car which I'm gonna show you when we look at the real car inside you just how similar this is to the Camaro these are some other sketches in the de in the development of this new Mustang I'm really glad that they did not go with any of these proposals because I think they they all look too sporty to be a Mustang. A Mustang is not a sports car. First of all, it is a muscle car, and these to me look like they are super sporty cars, except for this one up here, which is similar to what they actually decided to go with, as you can see in this gorgeous sketch right here. I do wish we still had the hockey stick design. The front end looks super cool and aggressive, and I think this is an upgrade from the current generation Mustang. I'm gonna show you that as well when we look at the real cars and compare the two. And then we have the side view right here, which still looks like a Camaro. And then going to the rear end, I think this looks a little too weak for me. I made a quick redesign of this. I'm gonna show you that when we have a look at the rear view. So let's have a look at the front view here and compare the Mach 1 to the current Mustang. And the reason I think this is gonna sell really, really well, first of all, the design is more muscle car-y in the front end. Here we have angles in the front end that makes it look more like a sports car and brings it into the same direction that Camaro has went to turn it into more of a sports car than a muscle car. The last remaining muscle car is the Challenger. The Ford Mustang sits in between the Challenger and the Camaro when it comes to American, you know, pure muscle car. But in this case, I think this takes a step even closer away from the sports car design and in more closer to the muscle car design because looking at this line up here we have a straight line creates the 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 starting point for the graphic that sits underneath it and we have this big grill that makes it look a lot bigger than what it actually is and in the bottom we have a simple treatment of the lower part of the intakes with this line going into these wings at the bottom which I think looks really cool it has a more structural more geometrical approach to this design of the new Ford Mustang looking at the side view this is where it becomes interesting when we compare it to the Camaro which I'm gonna pop in in just a second we have very similar overall proportions between these two cars there's not a lot of big differences in the body work of this I think this is a new line right here that we have in the side and we also have a new treatment of the rear end you can see that here what I love about the current Mustang is that this rear end protrudes outwards and creates a solid base for this here it kind of cuts in and makes these cuts into the the body and then we have this angle it feels weaker than the than the current rear end this feels like a solid planted rear end while this feels like it's almost f too light in the front end this is what I like about the new Mustang as I said we have more of an aggressive styling for this design and also simple lines in the body which I think suits a muscle car overall now if we pop in the Camaro here you can see <laughs> that we have a lot of the similarities between these two when you really go into the line flow and the the, the, the details 
models of this. They are super similar, except for one part that I think that really sets these apart, and that is the roof line. You see in the Mustang, it's a continuous curvature all the way from the top part going back into this fast back design. While in the Camaro, it kind of pans out right here and creates almost a straight line before it starts to dip. And I think that's the biggest change between these two cars. The, the greenhouse look pretty similar as well. You can see that right here. The only angle is this angle that is different. Then we have the same line right here in, in the rear fender, same line in the Camaro, same kind of shoulder line that goes in right here. And almost even this new line at the bottom of the new Mustang looks very similar to this line that we have in the bottom of the Camaro as well. And on top of that, looking at the rear end graphics, you know, how they kind of cut into the body in a very similar way. This has, the Mustang feels like it has more cuts, more angles going on than the Camaro, which has a straight line going on right here, which I actually prefer. I think this looks more solid and this is what I wanted to see in the new Mustang as well. And that's also what I focused on when I did the redesign of the rear end of the new Mustang. So let's, uh, let's have a look at that. And first of all, compare the old to the new. Comparing this to the front end, I think there is too much going on here and it's also too weak. So these taillights, they feel a little small, they feel a little squintish and it's emphasized by this cut line for the trunk that goes up here and creates a narrower feel for where the uh, taillights are sitting. We don't have a clearly defined deck lid like we had in the previous generation where this whole entire black piece was the housing for the taillights. Here we have a different solution. It makes it look like uh, if you compare a bodybuilder to a uh, 100 meter sprinter for example, it just lost some mass in the rear end. This looks super planted specifically with the quad bazooka tailpipes on the Mach 1 right here. So what I wanted to do was just make some very small changes to this design and simplify this design. So up top you have the original 2024 Mustang rear end and this is my redesign down here. Very very subtle changes but I think the big change that I did here was to push this diffuser outwards a little bit more and not have it be this angle, more of, more of this angle, like a tiny change to the diffuser in the rear end. And on top of that, create a solid, de solidly defined deck lid in which these taillights sit without having this line going up here and cutting into the taillights. Instead, having the taillights stretching down all the way to the bottom and have them be confident, more pronounced in the rear end. I think that would help this rear end design. In addition to simplifying this wing that we have going in all kinds of angles, when I have a simple wing, because it is a muscle car, it's not something sophisticated, even though it, it might have a pure function, it might have a clear function, the, the, the rear spoiler, I still want to have the design be simplified because I think that's more in line with a muscle car. In the side view, I wanted to keep add this uh, L-shape, L hockey stick line that we have in the 2005 Mustang all the way up to 2010 and to 2014 up until the S550 when they removed this line. I think that's a shame because it adds some more dynamics in the side view of the car. So tiny changes like that, I think, it, at least in my opinion, made a big difference to this design. So looking at the interior. What I think they did here is clearly modernized the interior. We now have one massive iPad on the dash here, which houses both the infotainment and the gauge cluster. I love that you can customize the gauge cluster to be the Fox body uh, dial. So I think that's really cool. But what I would like to have instead of this is to just keep a housing for the gauge cluster like we have up here. Because what this does now, if we have this big screen here, it removes the double wave design that we have in every single uh, in, in Mustangs going back to the original this design is super important for an interior in a Mustang I think they even added it in the Mach E but they did not add it in the real Mustang which is really weird to me even though you still have the iPad here I think we could still have the double wave design in the background here something like this but instead they decided to create something completely new for the 2024 Mustang I don't have anything against this interior I think it looks really clean a little too sterile with this uh, integration of the iPad but I do love the uh, flat bottom steering wheel right here and of course you get a manual and the reason why I think this is going to sell another reason in, in addition to the design why I think this is gonna sell really well is I think a couple of years from now when a lot more people are buying EVs and uh, hybrids and so on I think the more EVs we get on the roads the more people are going to start to realize how cool and how much fun and how much more alive these old V8 cars felt like and this is going into production as a 2024 model with a V8, I think that will make it more competitive specifically for 
car enthusiasts who's, who are looking for something fun to drive with a V8 rear wheel drive and manual transmission, those cars brand new are becoming rarer and rarer and that's why I think the new Mustang is having a huge advantage by having those elements in place in a brand new 2024 model.